Welcome everyone to this first in a number of webinars as part of Henley and Partners Education webinar series. I'm delighted to kick off this series today with Dr. Elizabeth Stone, who's going to talk to you about why boarding in North American schools. My name is John Milne and I'm Head of Global Education at Henley and Partners. I'm an experienced educator in international schools as well as in British boarding schools and I will be joining you as part of this education webinar series showcasing Henley and Partners education excellence in supporting families around the world find the best educational settings for their children. There is an opportunity at the end to ask questions. If you'd like to contribute as we go along, please do enter any questions or any comments into the chat channel, and I will endeavor to either answer those as we go along, or I'll answer them along with Dr. Stone at the end of this presentation. We're aiming for the presentation to be around 20, 25 minutes long with some questions and answers afterwards. So sit back and relax and enjoy your insight into why boarding in North American schools. Over to you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much and um, hello everyone. Um, I'm calling you from the San Francisco Bay Area, so it's early morning where I am and I'm pleased to be able to talk to you about our schools in North America that your students may be interested in exploring. I'm an educational consultant with Henley and Partners and i um, happy to, to give you some information today and I hope you'll have some questions for me as well at the end. So we have a lot of boarding schools in the United States um, and in Canada. Uh, this is just a little map to show you where they're all clustered. So there's a lot to learn about when you're considering sending your child to a North American boarding school. You'll see from the map, however, that they're really clustered along the East Coast of the United States. But we do have really excellent boarding schools on the West Coast and some in the central part of the United States as well in the Midwest, um, in the Southeast and other parts of the country. So many, many schools to, to look at, all very, very different. So um, your search for a boarding school really starts with having a really general idea of what kinds of schools are out there and what would be a good fit for your own student. So why would one want to choose a North American boarding school? Well, there's lots of reasons that you might be considering this for your child. Um, I think primarily students uh, from international locations are interested in coming to North America to improve their English language skills um, and considering where they might be applying to college and wanting to be sure that they're going to be prepared for that in terms of their own language skills and also in terms of the kind of curriculum that they've studied in their secondary school. When students attend a boarding school in the United States or Canada, they have an opportunity to live with a diverse peer group. They're gonna be with students who are probably majority American students, maybe 75%, 80% American students, but the international population will be made of students from all over the world. And that's an exciting opportunity for your students to learn more about other cultures, um, other practices at the same time, be immersed in American culture. Our North American boarding schools are known for having exceptional sports and art facilities, and a lot of students come to American and North American schools because their students want to specialize in a sport or in a particular kind of visual or performing arts, and there may be their home school doesn't have those facilities available to them. So our, our, our boarding schools in the US and Canada are, um, they're almost like small college campuses for the most part. They have really outstanding facilities, including not only arts and sports, but also science labs and uh, facilities that a, a traditional high school day school might not have available for your student. So if your student is really excited about a particular program, whether it be computer science, lab science, performing arts, or a sport, that's not offered at your home school. You have a lot to research in the United States and Canada to see if there's a school that will uh, be able to nurture that interest with your student. Our schools are also known for having very small class sizes and highly qualified teachers. And many of the teachers you'll find in our North American boarding schools have doctorate degrees or the highest degree in their field and um, are, are excited about teaching younger students. They've chosen not to teach at the college level, but to impart their knowledge in a, in a smaller community with younger students. So very high quality teachers in small classes is another hallmark of our boarding schools. 
One thing that parents really love is the fact that all those extracurricular options are all in one location. Um, as a parent myself, I know what it's like to be driving your child all over cities um, and sometimes further to get them to the best instructors in their sport or in their arts field um, to give them the best tutors and things like that. So when you have a student who's at a boarding school, of course, everything is there in one location and it, the parent no longer has that responsibility of, you know, put patching together or pulling together all the resources that your student needs in order to have a really successful secondary school experience. Uh, a lot of uh, our North American boarding schools are six day a week programs, Monday through Friday, and perhaps a Saturday morning. And they are structured in such a way that the students have time in their day to pursue those extracurricular interests. It's part of the school curriculum rather than sort of an add-on that your student might be doing in their home school and having a difficult time juggling, you know, when are those dance classes coming in or when are those lacrosse practices happening or soccer practices happening. When a student is at a boarding school, of course, the academic program and the extracurricular program are all part of the same educational plan for a student. And that can be a really great benefit for the student as well as a benefit for the parents who um, might have difficulty pulling all of those uh, levels of expertise together to provide that support for their child. Of course, when a student goes away to school, they will develop a sense of independence and immerse themselves in a new culture. It may be the first time the student is responsible for making a lot of independent decisions um, in terms of what they study, how they study, the friends that they make, um, how they spend their money, how they spend their weekends and things like that. And again, of course, being immersed in North American culture and having the opportunity to travel within the country to learn more about the resources in America and Canada. And then, of course, many families choose an American or Canadian boarding school because it makes it for a fairly easy transition into a university. When students study in North America, there's a choice of curriculums, but they're all pretty focused on preparing students for the kinds of skills and knowledge that they'll need to successfully enter an American or Canadian university. So as you're thinking about choosing a school, or starting this research process, there are a lot of things for you as parents to be considering. As I said, just showed you on the map earlier, there's a lot of choices in North America for where you might send your student. So how do you take all these schools and figure out which ones are gonna be applicable to your student and support your student's needs? So many of the boarding schools that um, we have here in North America are actually a combination of boarding and day school, which means that not all students live on campus. There might be a, a portion of the student body, and that could be from 25 to 50 percent or, or as little as 10 percent of students who come from the local area. And that's enriching for the student as well to have uh, classmates that know the local area and um, can again provide that cultural experience to your student. Um, but you might prefer a school that all students are residential and it's a kind of a 24 seven campus for everyone and no one is going home on the weekends and your student is not you know, left without their best buddies who've, who've gone home, but at a fully residential school, the students would all be there together all during the school term. Of course, many of our schools are single, single gender, um, and that sometimes is a preference for parents and other families are looking for schools that are co-ed or mixed gender. So that's something to consider and that will help you eliminate a lot of schools on our list because you'll eliminate the ones that don't fall into a category that you find the best for your own student. If your student has a particular athletic endeavor that they wanna pursue, you'll wanna to check to make sure that the school offers those sports. Of course, if your student is a a snowboarder or a skier, you probably don't want to choose a boarding school that's in, you know, the southern part of the United States where it's warm all year long, uh, but perhaps maybe in Canada or in the New England area of the United States or perhaps in Colorado where there are great mountains. So those are things to check out as well. The geography of where the school is located is going to have an uh, influence on what kinds of athletic options might be offered. Even in something like swimming on the West Coast, that's going to be an outdoor sport. And on the East Coast, it's going to be an indoor sport. That's something you might want to consider as well. And if you do have a student who's got a specialized art interest, you're going to be wanting to look at schools that really have 
the arts per per programs, whether it's visual or performing arts, as a hallmark of what they offer. Do they have music studios, private music lessons, ballet studios, outstanding visual art studios? You'll want to be able to take a look and see what those programs actually look like and who teaches in those programs. So another thing to consider when you're looking at boarding schools in North America is what tests are required for entry into those schools. Some of the schools require the SSAT, uh, the secondary school admissions test, which is offered internationally as well as in the United States or the ISEE, which is a similar test. Most schools will want international students coming to take a test of English language skill. So preparing for those tests is gonna be an important part of your uh, plan for attending a North American boarding school. And are you able to attend an on-campus interview uh, prior to applying if required? Because many schools in North America do want to meet the student in advance and the family and make sure that the student is a good fit for the school. So as you're looking for secondary schools for your student, you want to be sure that you're looking at schools that um, will be a match for your ability to travel to the United States or Canada for those interviews. Some schools will allow that on Zoom, of course, but being able to attend an on-campus interview is going to be a benefit for not only the school to have a chance to meet your student, but also for you to be able to see the campus and um, get a feel for what the campus is offering beyond, you know, a website search. So one of the confusing things perhaps about looking at schools in North America is that we offer a lot of different kinds of edu educational curriculum. So it's not one size fits all. Um, there's not one curriculum that every boarding school in North America, in North America follows. So learning about what these different academic programs are is gonna be a really important part of your search and then choosing which schools that you might be interested in applying to. The IB, the International Baccalaureate, is offered at many schools, and you may already be familiar with that in your home country, or your student may be doing um, an international program or an American program um, right now. Um, so some schools in the US and Canada also follow the International Baccalaureate program. It's a well-recognized program, of course, uh, across Europe, as well as in the United States and Canada. We also offer in the United States an advanced placement curriculum, um, which is different from the IB curriculum, but offers courses in a variety of areas that are considered college level courses, introductory college level courses. And those advanced placement courses um, usually culminate with a student taking what's called an AP exam, where they get a score. And if that score is high enough, they actually can earn college credit for those courses. So advanced placement courses are offered in uh, fields such as biology, chemistry, uh, U.S. history in, in world languages, um, mathematics, calculus, and things like that. I think there's like about 40 advanced placement courses. Any particular school might offer a range of those courses. They will probably not offer all of those AP courses, but there'll be a range. Some schools will offer 10 or 12, some might offer 20, some might offer just a few. So if that's something that's important to you and you are looking for a program that will also earn your students some college credit, sometimes that can shave a semester or a year off of a four-year college program, which makes it a good financial investment um, to be in a U.S. advanced placement program for your student. A Canadian curriculum is offered at some of the Canadian schools, a little bit different than the United States schools, particularly when it comes to courses in history and government. Those are focused on Canadian uh, programs and not U.S. programs, obviously. Some of our older boarding schools um, have what's called a Harkness curriculum, um, and that's a little bit different than the IB or the advanced placement because it's a curriculum that's really focused on small group discussion, very much student led, student focused. On the bottom slide here, you can see a picture of students sitting around a looks like, like a dining room table or conference room table. And these are uh, academic programs where there's a lot of discussion and it's very, as I said, student led. Um, and that's a great for a lot of students too who really thrive in an, up, in an environment where they're not just being lectured at and taking notes, but they're actually um, involved in the teaching of their peers and presenting knowledge to their peers through their own independent research. 
one of the things that you might be interested in for your student is programs that have an experiential component. Um, many schools offer intensive travel programs to other countries, backpacking trips, um, expeditions of all sorts. Um, one of the students I'm working with right now uh, just came back from two weeks in Chile as part of his academic program. The last two weeks of their term, um, all the students go to different countries and do a program uh, in a service component and a language component in different countries. So there's lots of variety. Some call, uh, secondary schools, boarding schools in North America will have several experiential programs throughout the year, or they'll be primarily based in an area where they're doing um, experiential programs or outdoor expeditions on a very regular basis. A lot of students really thrive with that hands-on learning and that immersive experience takes them out of the classroom and gives them a, a new perspective on the things that they're studying in the classroom but it allows them an opportunity to apply that in the real world. So those are really exciting programs and we have a lot of schools that offer a, a range of experiences in that realm. If you have a student with special needs, um, you're gonna to wanna to be looking, of course, for a school that offers a strong learning support program. And I know Hamley and Partners is doing a webinar uh, specifically on placement with students with learning differences. So you'll wanna attend that as well and learn more about that. So learning support programs can vary from um, private tutoring for students with dyslexia or on the autism spectrum. It can be, um, a, a, again, a, a program that has some smaller classes. It may be a specialized boarding school that works mostly or primarily with students who need learning support. So the whole academic curriculum is designed specifically for students who have those learning needs, rather than it be like a pull-out program or a program where your student will be required to have additional tutorial help. So that's a really strong, um, uh, these are really strong programs for students and provide a lot of great support, but really important for parents to know what kind of support does your student need and then finding a school that can match that. Considering whether your student will thrive more in a program that um, where everybody's kind of on the same academic plan and everybody's getting that same support or whether your student is wants to be in a, a very general education program and have that additional tutoring or support outside of the classroom. Some of our schools require athletics for everyone uh, some students are not excited about that. That's not their thing. So it's really important if you're looking at our North American boarding schools to, to learn about their athletic programs, not only for your students who are athletes, but particularly for your students who are maybe not athletes. Do they want to participate in athletic programs? And is that going to be a required part of the curriculum? So a few more things to consider. Um, what is, where is your student in their desire to leave home and try something new? Um, of course, these programs are most successful when your student is excited about the opportunities that lie ahead as well. So that's a conversation that's really important to have with your student early on and it can get them excited about all of these opportunities as well. Some of the schools in North America require uniforms and others are much more relaxed. Um, that may be a conversation you want to have with your student as well. Are they, are they comfortable with, with the uniform requirement? Uh, they may already be wearing uniforms in their schools and their home school, but, or it may be a, a, something that's a new experience for a student here in North America. If your student has special dietary requirements, you'll want to learn whether or not the schools can accommodate those. And very importantly, is your student able to advocate for themselves um, when your student is away from home and has to deal with situations on their own and with the help of their, their mentors and teachers at school? Um, is your student able to com communicate what their needs are and follow through so that they're getting the best out of their own experience on that campus? Um, does the school that you're looking at have the resources or community for your religious or faith group? And that can be very important also. There's a lot of schools that um, in North America, particularly in New England, that were founded by religious communities, um, were originally Protestant schools or Catholic schools, but do welcome people from all faiths, but that doesn't always mean that they have resources for students of all faiths specifically. Um, so that's something you'll want to find out about what their chaplaincy program is. Is there a mandatory mass or a, a church service required? And are, what is your comfort level with that if you're not part of that religious tradition? And again, what are the opportunities for parents to visit and for your student to come home during breaks? We talked about a little bit about that at the beginning of 
it's a school that has a lot of day students, those kids are going to be going home a lot during the school year. What are the opportunities going to be for your student to come home during school breaks? And what are the opportunities for parent visits? Many schools will have a parent's weekend in the fall or perhaps in the spring, opportunities for you to come out and see the school program in action and, and see your student. So those are good questions to ask um, of the schools that you're considering as well. So if you're interested in learning more about our North American boarding schools, it's really important to start early. There's so many things for you to consider. Um, first off, as I mentioned earlier, your student may need to test to get into these schools. So having a plan for testing is really important. That sometimes that requires them to work with experienced tutors to help them plan for the SSAT. Um, the flex option, which is here on the slide, allows for um, education consultants to test students individually on the student's own timetable, rather than um, having to find a date on a, in a public space on a, a, an international test date. So the SSAT flex is something for you to look into that's offered through the Enrollment Management Association. Um, but check with dates within your home country for when these secondary school uh, tests are um, available. And again, your student probably will need to have some kind of test of English language skills to know what's available in your country and what test the specific schools you're interested in are accepting. Your student will also need to prepare for in-person or Zoom interviews. Um, and for younger students who are entering boarding school in the early secondary school years, maybe 13, 14 years old, they may not have done those kinds of interviews before. And we like students to be prepared for those as well. So they go into those interviews feeling really confident. Uh, there's a lot of different applications, of course, for these schools. Some have early deadlines in October, November. Some are on what's called rolling admissions, which we, they, means they take students until their class fills. Um, and some are due as, as, as late as February, but they all have different dates. So again, important to know which schools you're interested in, to make a schedule of when all these school applications are due and what is required to complete each school's application. Uh, they usually are going to require some essays, so that's something the student's going to need to spend some time on. Occasionally, the schools will also ask for the parent to write a statement about what to tell them about their student and how they envision their student thriving in that secondary school. And um, most schools will also ask for letters of recommendation from prior teachers. So there's a lot to put together when your student's making these applications. And again, visiting the programs in person, either before you choose which schools to apply to or as part of the application process with an on-campus interview. So making sure that you all have time in your family schedule to make those visits to North America um, to check out the schools and to do those on-campus interviews if required. So lots to do. Um, lots of support is available um, from, from the Henley team um, to help your student uh, put all of these pieces together so they have a really successful um, outcome in terms of having options for, for a boarding school. So I'm just at the end here, and I want to let you know that if you have more questions about uh, what Henley and Partners can provide to your family, Tess Wilkinson is the person to be in touch with. She's happy to tell you more about their programs and um, how our, our consultants can assist your family in this process. So I think I'm right on time and I'm gonna stop my screen share. I think John might have some questions for me. Yeah, thank you very much, Elizabeth. That was incredibly informative and a wonderful journey through what's on offer from Henley and Partners. And whilst we're just waiting for some additional questions to come through, I just thought I'd ask maybe a couple of my own if that's okay. Just to remind everyone that there is a question and answer and a chat channel. So if you are interested in answering, uh, asking any questions, please do pop them into those channels. You will be receiving a recording of this webinar after the event itself. But if you do have specific questions or you'd like to follow up on anything, then please do pop them into the Q&A and the chat channel. So Elizabeth, just referring to that final slide that you posted there about preparing early. We know post-pandemic in international education that there is a real flight to quality. Everyone wants to get the children into the best schools and the best universities. Can you just talk a little bit about um, admissions rates, if you can, maybe just in general terms in North America and what that looks like at the moment and maybe how it compares to three, five years ago? 
Yes, I, I don't have the data on three to five years ago in terms of the boarding school admissions, but I can tell you that the admission rates really vary from as low as 10 to 15 percent to as high as 50 percent. Um, the there are a group of schools mostly in the New England area in the United States that are particularly um, selective. And those are the schools that have those very low, like 15% admission rates. Um, it may be a little bit lower for schools that limit the number of international students that they admit. So that's not usually broken down in the statistics that they report. Um, but we can see when we look at the data on the schools, you know, if it's 80%, domestic and 20% international and they have a 15% admission rate. We don't know how many, uh, what the admission rate is specifically for international families. It usually is lower than, than that number. So if it's 15% overall, that number is probably going to be lower for international families. So these are our competitive admissions and most students will apply to um, several campuses because there's not a guaranteed admission to any particular one. Yeah. Um, in terms of college admissions, um, that keeps getting harder and harder every year, and those numbers keep going. Now those are in single digits, many in the three to five percent admission rate for the most selective colleges in the country. But there's also wonderful universities in North America that that um, have much higher admission rates and more than thirty to forty percent as well. Great, Th thank you very much, Elizabeth. And then just another question um from my own perspective in terms of the benefits of working with a company like Henley and Partners and an associate like yourself obviously most families would be used to working with agents in country and we know that many of those agents have no contact whatsoever with some of these schools and or universities they just have heard of them and or they've got good commission rates from them and that's why they recommend them and we certainly know that many of these agents in country have never actually visited any of these schools or universities either. So can you just talk a little bit about the significant benefits of working with someone like yourself in terms of your in-country experience and also just your um, insight and connections with those schools and universities? Yeah, definitely. Um, I personally have visited over 450 campuses in North America, which is a lot. There's still a few, of course, I haven't visited, but I'm very, very knowledgeable about the landscape of schools um, here in the US and Canada. Um, you know, when you're working with consultants like myself, we're not paid by the university or the secondary school to bring them students. So we don't have any personal interest in where a student lands other than finding the best fit school for your student. Um, so we're open to a lot of different kinds of programs and we look really broadly for our clients. Um, we want to find the school that's going to be the best fit for them, not the school that's going to benefit myself or a, 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 an agent personally. So it's a very different relationship we have with the schools than what an agent would have. Um, I travel extensively. I go to conferences and um, meet with heads of boarding schools, heads of admissions, um, attend a lot of informational webinars, and of course, go out and visit programs all the time so that we're really getting to know the schools and the universities very, very well and are, are good matchmakers for what is best for the student. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a lot of different kinds of schools in America and in Canada with a lot of different kinds of curriculum. And we really need to learn about the family that's interested in these schools, whether it be a boarding school or a university and, and finding a really good match for them and a place that's not only a match for them right now today, but a place where they're gonna grow and try new things and expand um, their knowledge base. Because especially for boarding school, that's going to be the step prior to them applying to university. So we really wanna create that really good foundation in secondary school that will prepare them for the you know, the next four years when they enter university. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. And, and just a reminder there that it pays to work with the best. If you want your child to have the best educational outcomes, then placing them into the best educational settings for them means working with experts, just as you would buy the best legal advice and the best immigration advice, it pays to buy the best education advice as well. So um, Elizabeth Stone, thank you so much for your insights today. That was fascinating and a really, really insightful look into North American boarding schools. We don't have any more questions, but as Elizabeth mentioned in that final slide, if you'd like to ask any more questions or be in touch with either myself or Tess Wilkinson, then please 
contact us via email, but otherwise have a fantastic day and we look forward to you joining our other webinars in our education series through Henley and Partners. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth, and Thank have a fantastic you. week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.